And today's question is from Mia, and Mia asks, Dear Lori, can you give me some ideas of what I can do in the moment instead of blame, shame, and judge my kids? I find myself becoming impatient and then demanding, and before I know it, we are locked in battles. Thanks so much, Mia. Um, Mia, locked in power struggles is one of those times that can get our blood pressure rising and keep our tempers flaring. The exact conditions which will escalate the negative fear and the conflict. Now, shifting out of those negative patterns that include judgment or being critical, being harsh, impatient, or even indulgent or permissive, that's going to take some committed conscious practice. If you haven't seen my videos on self-care and mindfulness, be sure to check them out because they are a critical piece to making changes that last. So what can you do when you find yourself becoming impatient? Here are four easy ways that you can communicate with your kids without even thinking about it. First, take time in. When you want to talk or rush your children into compliance, just take some time to go inward and breathe. Use this time to release that inner monologue and say all of those impulsive and reactive things. Say them in your head. This serves a dual purpose. It gives you a chance to physically and emotionally regulate your body and connect with your own internal world. And it gives your kids a minute to process your words, to take in your ideas, and to consider your opinions and requests. Standing over your child and repeating directives or showing impatience only prolongs the reconnection and the shared understanding that is necessary for respectful interactions and collaborative problem solving. My next tip, mapping. Create a mental map of your child's daily life. The people, the teachers, the friends, places and events that regularly occur, routines that happen. Use this as a reference when you are looking for root causes of behavior. You can check in with your child's day to look for upcoming events that may be worrying or look to a particular sequence of events that may have led to the distressing behaviors or the conflict that you're now experiencing. Instead of saying something like, the morning just started, is this how you want it to go? Or, it's only 9 a.m., why are you so cranky already? You could say something like, I wasn't expecting that reaction. I'm wondering if you're worried about your math test later today. When you know about the people, events, and interests that are close to your child, or those that are a source of pain or challenge to overcome, then you can more easily find the words to support your child instead of reacting with your assumptions about his or her behavior. My next idea is for you to take out the negatives. No, can't, shouldn't, don't, stop. They aren't always necessary to change your experience, to set limits, or to teach lessons. So. Focus on what you do want as much as you can. Phrase your requests in the affirmative. Don't touch the hot stove becomes this is a very hot surface. Please keep your arms and your hands clear of this area. Or no, you can't have that candy bar becomes you can have a snack. You may choose one from this shelf or this bin in the refrigerator. Or sure, you can have a snack after lunch. Share your needs instead of just repeating directives. I told you already, get off that computer and start to clean your room. You can try, it looks like the laundry was not yet put away. I'd really appreciate your help. Would you be willing to get this in order, say, before the evening is over? And when you don't know what to say, just validate what you see and what you hear. You shouldn't have done that. Now becomes, well, sometimes our actions, they deliver unexpected results. Or, I don't think you were expecting that to happen. When you speak with clarity and compassion, then you teach your child to speak to people who are in need in ways that are not overpowering so that they can learn to share from a place of authenticity rather than control. And finally, perfect isn't better. Sometimes a strong desire for your kids to be more respectful or to just get it or to just listen better it might be coming from a place of self-judgment or the fear of what others will think. So investigate your unconscious beliefs and automatic reactions that are connected to perfectionism or criticism and perhaps a strong desire for authority or order. And then reevaluate your expectations that you have for your child. Perfectionism is disconnecting. By having control over your environment, you are soothing yourself, but it's a coping mechanism that does a disservice to your relationships and it's damaging in the long run. So ask yourself, what am I afraid of? 
You'll be able to let go of those moments of needing to control or have it your way every time you practice being conscious and mindful in the moment and checking in with what's really going on for you. Okay, Mia, that was my teachable moment for you. As always, I love hearing what you think. Please leave me a comment and share your thoughts in the comments because when you share your ideas, you never know. You just might inspire someone else towards the change that they were looking for. Now, did you like this video? Because if you did, would you do me a favor? Would you share it with a friend or someone that you love on your favorite social media site? Because when you share the love, the love spreads. And don't forget to check me out at teachthroughlove.com for all the latest updates and free classes, which I hold all the time. And make sure that you're subscribed right here as well on YouTube. Thank you for watching and for sharing. Until next time, please remember it's about consciousness, not perfection.